He would leave marks on my face as a sign for discipline. And some may call them bruises, but I call them visible prayers. My cheeks learned the lines on the inside of his palms like a road map to better behavior, but I was never good at following directions very well. See, when I was little, I peed in the garage because I was too lazy to go inside. I tried to blame it on the cat. He told me not to lie and mush my face into my own urine. I never thought I'd be able to smell my own dishonesty. You see, his hands were so strong that one day he lifted me up on my innocence. And when he let go, I landed in a foster home without even knowing he did it. Finished the last few months of my fifth grade year with a family that wasn't even mine. See, sometimes my emotions would explode like a gunshot and I'd watch tears race each other down to my jawline because it felt like my heart and his English were the only thing we had in common. Both broken like a record spinning the soundtrack to my family's harmony. But when I returned home that summer and things finally started to get back to normal, I was told that he was diagnosed with cancer and I realized that things are just getting started. See, while he was in the hospital, his hair began to wear thin like the line between discipline and abuse. My mother used to caress him like an instrument, plucking the hair strands from his head like harp strings that were tired of playing love songs. The radiation showed in his gums. They began to bleed courageously like the stab wounds in Caesar's back. See, while he was in the army, he used to be a long-range rifle shooter. At one point, he was the best in Japan. He would practice with patience and precision back when his hands were controllable he would always tell me before every single match he would chant and recite in his head katsu katsu zittai ni katsu i will win i will win no matter what i will win when i was sitting next to him on his hospital bed i could have swore i saw the reflections of shooting targets in his eyes his main aim was to live long enough to see his children succeed but for some reason while he was in the hospital resentment was growing in my blood like a bad case of leukemia his illness wasn't even a good enough reason for me to forgive him at the time but now i get it that i finally understand you were just surviving long enough to offer me an apology that I could properly accept to construct the altar that I now pray to with the same hands that were used to bruise my faith. You started to teach me what it means to never give up no matter what, whether it's finishing a poem or surviving cancer. Dad, I promise, Boku Katsu, Zittani Katsu, I will win no matter what, I will win. How dare, how dare I resent the man that taught me how to pray when I know people who never had a father in the first place. So thank you for your broken English that reminds me I am Jack. Japanese, for the spots on your arms from overcoming cancer that remind me I'm still breathing and for all of those little things because nowadays he gives me haircuts and he claims that they're perfect every single time and every now and then he'll leave a patch on the back side of my head about the same size as the bruises he used to leave on my face but I just smile and take it as a reminder of how uncontrollable his hands used to be.